I'm going to talk about embodied media in performance and uh, some of the work that I do with my colleagues at UC Irvine. The question comes up, what is embodied media in performance? Well, let me give you a quick demonstration. This is a telepresence performance where we connected one of our studios at UC Irvine with a studio in uh, Santa Cruz, at UC Santa Cruz. This is the Dreamer. Uh, she's on stage in Santa Cruz. Our dancers that you can see, uh, the smaller people on the screen there, are in Irvine. We're connecting over the internet in a way that creates a performance that happens in two places simultaneously. This is realizing to some extent a vision I had 20 years ago when I started to realize after a career in theater and followed by a career in the software industry that it might be possible to use the lessons from the performing arts to connect and create a new way of interacting with computers and all kinds of computational devices. I call that embodied media. Some of the key things we need to look at when we're thinking about embodied media is that it happens in a real-world environment. This isn't virtual reality. This isn't something that only happens on the screen. This is something that connects people with the world they physically inhabit, and it's real-time interaction. It's not looking at something that happened a while ago. It's not sitting in a theater um, watching something that was uh, maybe filmed um, a week or a year or a hundred years ago. It's about things that happen in the moment, connecting movement, uh, speech, music, all forms of performing arts with digital media tools that are getting more and more ubiquitous. In 1990, they weren't quite as ubiquitous as they are today, but we're finding, of course, now that with this spread of computing technology, which is really at its root, providing us the ability to communicate, so why don't we really call it communication technology, we can bring the dynamic range of expression that humans are capable of into this environment with these kinds of computational tools. One of the fertile places to employ this technology, these ideas, this dream, this vision, is in this area called telepresence, where we put together performances that happen simultaneously in multiple locations. And this is looking at art as not so much representing the world. This is looking at art as a way of making a series of relationships and art can map these actual relationships with potential relationships. And in other words, art can show us ourselves not as we are, but as we can be. Um, art could, can be seen as a window on the world, um, and of course Shakespeare talked about holding the mirror up to nature, but my interpretation of that is not that we just need to show ourselves the way we are or show the world um, the way it exists, the job of an artist is to show the world the way it exists inside us, in our kind of higher potential. And um, the, the things I just said about telepresence, I can actually attribute to um, a really interesting theorist named Roy Ascot, who wrote this many, many years ago in the 60s when he really saw this as, as a potential to do what we want to do. So these ideas have been around for a long time. This is not particularly, to use a word I really don't like, innovative. What does that mean anyway? This really is about finding ways to kind of peel the onion, getting back to some essential truth that has been around for a long time. Some of the performances we've done um, uh, in this uh, a period of time since the mid-60s when I started doing telepresence work um, have connected multiple sites, uh, like three or four. Some have been two-site performances. But the guiding factor behind all of these events are these principles I just talked about, this idea that we're connecting with the world in a particular way. The clip I showed you earlier is from a performance we did in 2006 called Utu. Um, and uh, one of the uh, things we worked very hard on in that performance was training the dancers at Irvine to basically play the system like an instrument. In other words, 
the camera was not just something that was picking them up. The camera was a tool that they actively engaged with. And so you can see this dancer here actually connecting with the camera. She's using the camera as what in computer terms we sometimes call a user interface, a way of interacting with the computational device. And her interactions are beamed real time to Santa Cruz. The dancers there are beamed real time back to Irvine using technology similar to this. This is my Active Space Intermedia performance system. I manipulate it live real time during a performance like this. And so really I'm playing the system as well. It's a collaborative activity. And um, I'm watching the dancers. I'm watching things that go on real time in our location as well as the other location um, in uh, Santa Cruz this, in this case. And um, here you can start to see some of the work that goes on. The screen um, on the right hand side of your screen, you can see kind of multiple images there. That's our dancers watching what's going on in Santa Cruz. That's part of their interface. This is what the system is picking up. This is the kind of input to my media performance system and it's carefully designed. The interaction between this dancer's hands and the people in the background is rehearsed and then connected live to the performance going on in the other location, in this case in Santa Cruz. Here's how it looks on stage in Santa Cruz. This was actually in a theater a lot like this one, whereas in Irvine we were in a kind of like a film sound studio and our performance became part of the entire environment. In a sense, our performers in Irvine were creating the set that was projected live in Santa Cruz. You can see the bed there, there was projections on the bed. Um, and uh, our dancers were the dream that was kind of beamed in to be part of what was going on here. An interesting side note is that the dancers in Santa Cruz were all undergraduate dance students who hadn't had that much dance training. Our dancers in Irvine were all MFA students who were expert choreographers and dancers even before they came to our school. And so one of the things we worked on during the rehearsal process was having our dancers lead the improvisation over the internet. Um, by improvisation, I mean the performance has some structure points, but it changes a little bit each time. There's not an actual series of steps or uh, individual movements that get performed. The ability to kind of change the performance as it proceeds as, is really an essential element. And so we, uh, I think, had some success with this idea of our expert dancers in Irvine having uh, a great deal of influence on the performance that happens simultaneously in Santa Cruz. Dance media can be used in a performance in a lot of other ways, too. This is a piece that uh, was done on stage at UC Irvine. Um, the uh, dancers uh, that look right now uh, to be in the background um, often in this piece ended up in the foreground because as soon as the projection was off on this scrim in the front, the dancers in the background became much more visible. And uh, this piece connected live performance on the stage with the screen. Um, often what we find is that people say, well, in a dance performance with video, you know, it's, it's distracting. I don't know where to look. And one of the things we experimented with here was the idea of creating a shared visual space where the dancers on stage and the dancers on the screen connected uh, in, a, in a way that was designed to, uh, to do so. Um, I want to show you a little bit, um, you can bring down the audio for this one, Josh. Um, I want to show you a little bit about the way this is created. This is one of our dancers, Donald. We filmed him in a green screen studio, um, and uh, we had lots of sequence to, cho to choose from. I took this one sequence, just a few seconds long, that I like, this place where he leans back and looks. Um, I slowed it down, removed the background, and started to apply some color treatments to get this feeling of him being in a different environment. Um, I actually ended up flipping it so it fit the, the stage design a little better, slowed it down still more, and now we start to see a version of Donald's performance that's different than what you would see on stage because I'm interpreting it. I'm trying to do what I call visualizing the energies inside the dance. Here's Patricia, I really like this moment where she brings her hands forward and, and they kind of quiver a bit. Um, here it is, just to see that one little short sequence. So I slowed it down, removed the background, and uh, decided to focus really on just the outlines of her as a dancer. And when you see this slow down still more, the way it was projected in the performance with a little bit of color added, you start to see rhythms in the movement that weren't apparent the first time you saw it in real life. 
So Patricia was on stage live, and also her kind of processed uh, visual version was there projected on the screen as well. This is a piece that um, I did with uh, Lisa Noggle in uh, Beijing. Um, this combined uh, live dance with dance that was modified in real time. We had cameras picking up the dancers, and you can see them presented in various ways that kind of comment on the dance as it occurs. Uh, this is with students at the Beijing uh, Dance Academy, which is the premier dance uh, university in China. Um, and they had never worked with uh, interactive digital media before, so it was a wonderful experience to kind of connect with them at that level. And um, the, uh, the system you're seeing here is my uh, active space intermedia performance system that I use for a lot of performances like this. Um, this is a dance film uh, that really is just designed for the screen. And um, I'll be showing you a few examples of these dance films uh, in the next few minutes. You might recognize Patricia and Donald in this one. You can bring up the audio again, Josh. Thank you. My intention here was to use the dance as raw material to make a piece that kind of commented on the relationship between dance and music. And for those of you that are familiar with Norman McLaren, you might see a little homage here to that great Canadian animator. So we're really not seeing dance here, but everything you're seeing on the screen is derived directly from dance. I don't push any pixels in that sense. Everything I do is a way of connecting the dance to a, a vision, an idea, or a connection with the visual screen that you're seeing. skip forward a little bit in the piece, it'll become a little more obvious. you'll be able to see this piece in its entirety. It'll be running uh, during the reception. Uh, this is a piece that um, we recently finished um, uh, based on uh, Galileo's letter where um, he tried to make the point, um, surprising we really still haven't learned it yet, that religion has no place in science, that really science is about a certain kind of truth that's not about belief, it's about investigating, looking, Maybe there's no straight individual truth, but there is a way of relating to the universe that's about respecting that. And um, so we decided to film this uh, in Joshua Tree, uh, took our dancers there. It was um, September, so it was still kind of hot. We uh, 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 got there at 4 in the morning and did most of our shoots between 4 and 8. This piece was choreographed on the spot. In other words, the dancers worked with the choreographer Lisa Noggle to create material that we then shot in the moment. But the piece itself really was created in the editing process. And again, you can see this in its entirety during the break. In, Sh in Search of Eurydice uh, is looking at what happens in this search process. You're all, I'm sure, familiar with Orpheus and Eurydice, the idea that um, he would be searching for his doomed lover. Uh, the idea that we were looking at here, though, is that Orpheus is a part of all of us, Eurydice is a part of all of us, and so the dancers 
in this imp improvised uh, uh, dance session were embodying aspects of Orpheus in the man and also in the woman. And uh, uh, also Eurydice was embodied by both. They kind of traded that off back and forth. Again, I used the dance as raw material to create the film. The music for the last couple of pieces was, is by Dino Getzo, a composer from New York University who we worked with a lot. And again, you can see that piece in the break. Good reason to stay, stay around for the reception. Um, I also wanted to point out some of the work I've been doing with connecting this intermedia idea with public art. Uh, this is an installation that was done for San Francisco Ballet uh, at, in their 75th anniversary season. They wanted to look forward as well as back. And so they commissioned me to create a piece that was about dance education. This is kind of like a photo booth for dance where the children um, or adults in this space uh, pick the dancer they want to dance with, uh, they pick a style, they learn it, and they get to dance it along with the dancer. Uh, this was commissioned by Zeeum. Uh, we really kind of moved out of a dance education paradigm and more in an influential paradigm. Zeeum is a really wonderful uh, children's art and technology museum in San Francisco. And in this environment, you can see the kids get to pick a musical style, they get to pick a visual style of how they're represented, and then they just get to rock out with that and see themselves, uh, this is an animated thing that happens in real time, and they get to record that and come back and see it later. Um, and uh, I want to close by showing you some excerpts from uh, a piece that is still in process. Um, uh, this is called Silk Dragons, um, and it's from a, uh, a trilogy called Threads and Trajectories. Uh, this part was filmed in Beijing. During my work in Beijing over the last five years, I've really been impressed with the way that ancient cultures and extremely contemporary cultures are coexisting in a way that I'm not sure that anybody really intended or planned. The threads are the threads going back through culture. The trajectories are these incredible superhighways spinning through the city, and I still have vivid memories of driving along these superhighways at night, looking down and seeing people huddled over their cooking fires and thinking, Wow, this is really a very broad culture. There's a lot going on here. We filmed in the hutongs and in the courtyard houses of Beijing with dancers from the Beijing Modern Dance Company. The score is by Alan Terciano, who set some poems that were from China, translated in America, and then sung in English. So um, I do invite you to stick around for the reception and take a look at some of these things in more detail um, in the break room. I'm happy to chat with you in more detail as well. Thank you very much.